Hi everyone, uh, welcome to ELI, the place where you get your daily dose of inspiration for entrepreneurship. And today we have with us Ms. Arpita Doshi, who is the founder of Nutrition Dynamic Foods. Hi Arpita, welcome to ELI. Thank you. Thank you, Eli, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I would request you to introduce yourself and uh, briefly tell us what is uh, NDF, what kind of company it is, and uh, what are the different products that you have. So, if you, uh, I'll start with my introduction. So, by sure. education, I'm a microbiologist and a biotechnologist. And uh, I did my biotechnology in UK in 2002 and uh, then I worked over here in UK for around uh, five years and okay. thought about settling back in India so I moved back to India and I uh, was having a uh, well to I mean I was married to a business family as I come from Gujarat land of mm -hmm. Gujarat and Gujarat is known for business so I was married to a business family born and brought up both in business family as well so business was something that had always been I have seen what are the ups and downs happening mm -hmm. uh, however I was always more passionate about research because being a science graduate and then working here in UK I saw the importance of research so mm -hmm. I was always passionate about research and as far as my personality traits I'm a very cheerful and bubbling personality I love to do gardening and cooking was my passion. So right from the age of eight, I had been inside the kitchen because it was like a chemistry lab to me uh, mm. where I can experiment with the various different textures, colors, and even the smells and also sometimes, you know, disasters also. So it was a okay. great experience in the kitchen that mm. I felt. Um, that's how I basically I am. But I, I love to even read more of research articles and scientific documents, you know, to mm -hmm. find out because I'm a very curious person. I just want to know how things work and what are the things that have been unexplored. So this is basically my trait. And in terms of NDF, well, actually, Nutrition Dynamic Foods uh, started with a need. As I mentioned to you that I settled down in India and then in 2009, I had my own very bad health condition where mm. for 26 days I was on a ventilator and then the post rehab journey, I was told to consume juices. Now, you know that in, uh, in India, vegetable juicing is frequently and widely accepted. Right. However, because it is a seasonal thing. And secondly, it is very time consuming. We are not able to continue our good habit throughout the year. Mm. So when I was uh, advised to take this uh, vegetable juices, especially not the fruit ones, but the vegetables one, because they're very low in sugar content. And when you are in a rehab journey, you don't want to overload yourself with more carbs or sugary products. So that's when I thought that, yeah, it is working. It gave me energy. And I was very uh, confident when I was, I used to drink those juice, you know, it, it mm. just boosted my energy levels and my confidence level. Okay. So then I thought that, that uh, while I was traveling, again, it happened that I had to stop using those things because mm. it again became inconvenient to find it and make an effort to, yeah. you know, go to a juice wala and get, get it for yourself. So that's when I saw that why, if I can do something, work around in some these areas, definitely it can be a big help to people like me, of course, who also who were in need, but yeah. also to the people who are looking for something very natural and instant to make their health, you know, because health was gaining more momentum, especially in 2015 when I got this idea and saw the need. That time I saw a lot many people were more tending towards health. So with that need, I started NDF. And as I said that uh, I was more into research, the first thing I did was that I surveyed what the market had. What were the available options in the market? And when I saw, I found those niche gaps, you know, like food industry was mainly focused on taste mm. and uh, uh, the pharmaceutical or nutraceutical supplement industry was mainly focused on function that you take our uh, pills and you will be able to get these health benefits. 
but the, at the age of 40s or 50s you always don't like to you know gulp more medicines because it gives mm. you a psychological pressure that you are not well so i did not wanted to fall, uh, fell in that trap and that's when i thought that why not start a new category which combines both which overcomes food industries uh, issue that they are not able to preserve health as well as the nutraceutical industry which are not able to give taste so that's how after that research i designed around um, 10 products uh, 16 products to be precise and out of which there after we applied for its patenting right and of course we took on a commercialization journey to just know whether these products will be accepted in the market or not in 2019 after which in 20 and then of course with one, within one year we were are all completely unaware of covid so in 2022 april we did a full market launch of our product and today we are present in mumbai pune ahmedabad and also through a website where we are not able to give a physical presence we are available through our websites also so that's how i started my journey about ndf and this is how the products i designed so if i want you to tell you about the three commercialization products that we have designed is known as ndf dudhi jaljeera which is also known as loki in hindi Okay. so dudhi is a very gujarati name for loki mm. and uh, we uh, do we deployed freeze drying technology because as i mentioned that nutraceutical and pharmaceutical industry processing was done either through extraction or to freeze dry it and in food industry it became a bit inconvenient because of the high processing cost and uh, that's where another challenge came where we i know uh, give at a compatible price as well as something that is healthy as well and functional basically main focus was on functionality that should make you feel good when you drink them so we deployed the technology and we used a very traditional method uh, ingredients those ingredients that were highly prescribed in our ayurvedas but were not more popular because of its taste or because of its inconvenience you know so we combined them and we made this dudhi jaljeera which comprises of uh, freeze dried bottled wood or loki mint pepper and cumin and none of the flavorings that i say like jaljeera is not a flavor that we have added but we have created it using fresh uh, natural herbs and spices and also like uh, the second product that we did was at that time we were not sure about this covid but at that time we did it for inner immunity and that was this amrit chura which comprises of uh, haldi amla lemon ginger and kokum and uh, then the third one we did was for our senior citizens who who loves their green veggies but are unable to do it because of their energy deficient levels so we did it with uh, freeze dried bottle wood or loki spinach moringa or drumstick uh, and rosemary and oats we added to give a veggie oat soup you know to them so these are the three flagship products that we have commercialized awesome uh, tell us about the launch that you did in april uh, uh, what were the initial set of things that you did to you know uh, uh, make this launch successful or how did you how did you take your product to market because uh, the way i understand for any d2c business or any uh, consumer facing business it it takes some time there is a lag time before the consumers find uh, accept it uh, there is a product market fit and there is a inbound uh, nature to it so how did you go to that state okay so first thing uh, we did launch uh, our prototype in 2019 mm. and that time we did it only where i was uh, headquartered you know so in amdabad that's where we launched it that okay. if it is getting accepted in real market where we we placed it in many retail stores you know where people would come and you know normally buy the products mm. uh, we we did that with all organic and ayurvedic stores and we saw that yes the product have been accepted and the taste was because we did a lot of uh, continuously we were doing a survey also along with the uh, selling of the product mm-hmm. so survey used to be our you know like a guiding 
uh, limelight that would help me to understand what next strategies I should place in order to make it successful. So uh, I completely believe that all those market surveys that we did was helping me to improvise our product, helping me to tell and explain better how this product is uh, getting helpful to the consumers. And that's how we started in 2019. Mm -hmm. Coming to the second point, we in that year when we did in 2019, we knew that in initial stage, and especially in India, where functional food beverage category is not yet well defined, we had to categorize it as an FMCG product. And you know very well in FMCG market, there's a lot of competition and yeah. many big shops are already present. So in order to compete them, either we needed something that would be exclusive to ourselves only. So this is why the patent thing that we took on our combinations and method of preparation, mm -hmm. that helped me to survive those uh, initial ditches, you know, okay. that when you place it in the market, Market. That's why in 2015 to 2018, I did not sell a single product. All I did was to wait for that patent to be published. And then after I sold those products so that, you know, tomorrow morning when it comes in the market, the chances of getting it copied are quite lesser than what uh, others would face it. Mm. And uh, thirdly was our content. See, in all this um field, even in entrepreneurship, what I've learned is that content is very important. So being uh, passionate about research, I was very lucky that I was the one who used to generate so many content and, you know, like sit directly with our marketing people that this is how you need to tell people, this is how you need to convey the message. Mm -hmm. and, I, and in that time, I was continuously researching on what people are understanding, understanding, you know, because as a scientist, I would understand the language which people would not understand. Mm -hmm. And in initial days, these are the things that always happens. As an entrepreneur, I've seen, you always focus on your product, product, product. But at that moment, it is very necessary that you balance both product and consumer. Because mm -hmm. tomorrow, if consumers are understanding, then only it's going to sell. So uh, those surveys I used to take. So this is how that market fit was coming. And in that survey, there was one thing that was always like in my mind, but I was a bit, you know, like uh, resistant that whether this, I should implement this um, feedback or not. And that was like, uh, people used to tell me that your product is amazing. However, it is inconvenient to carry because it was a, monthly pack that we used to give in our prototype stage you know that okay. if you have it for a month you will come to know that yes it is making you feel good because having one sachet would may not be making you feel happy or mm. may not give you that visible difference that you want to see so at that time we were a bit reluctant but then when covid came we thought that yes it is very true it gives me a different leverages also that where a packet is not going, we can sell it through single pouches. So it, 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 it helps in improving our revenues as well. So mm -hmm. it was better that I we incorporate. And that's how in COVID times, uh, we changed our way of marketing because of course at that time, everybody was asked to change. Mm -hmm. And the retail stores were not allowing us to do sampling, which is very essential for FMCG or such product. So at that moment, this uh, sachet was something that helped us Secondly, the way we used to communicate in our prototype was there was no information on the pack. So we had to deploy one person, you know, to explain that product. But that's not possible when you want to scale up or when you want to grow. So yeah. we redesigned our whole packaging and uh, we gave them uh, this convenience. So now people are able to even carry it when they're on flight because they are all pre-mixes, you know. Mm -hmm. So something that you can carry it when even you're on a flight, not just like liquids because it's ready to dr uh, drink uh, products, you can't carry it, but you all you need is just water. So that was the reason. Uh, they, these were the things. I hope I have answered you all three questions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking of the surveys and product market fitment, uh, I understand that you, you made, did a lot of surveys and you took a very research oriented approach to design the product and tweak them to fit the market. So tell us a little bit about 
those researches and was there a way to measure where you have reached in terms of product market fitment because many founders i talk to they say if 50% uh, of your users uh, uh cannot leave uh, without your product then you achieve product market fit and there are many ways to measure it there's just one way of thinking so can you tell us about it how did you go about it okay so uh as i say when uh, this is a very good point that you said that 50 percent um if your product is getting accepted that's when you see that yes it can have a ability to grow and uh that moment i'm just remembering in that flashback time during this COVID time we, and we were there on uh, all this e-commerce platform and in COVID, you knew that national lockdown was there there was no way i can sell the product but mm. we saw people reordering it and that can only happen when they compared them our products with other products that were available and in COVID times, a lot many health products have been flooded inside the market. Yeah. But most important thing that saved us was our quality assurance. Okay. See, we as a founder always think that we look at a short-term gain of, okay, immediately we want our product to generate revenue. Now you have to have some time for that to grow. And in that time, if you are not able to retain your quality, you will not be able to grow. Maybe today I'll buy it for once, but if I have a quality product, it will, from inside, it will inspire me to go and get it again. So that is the reason why I always emphasize, preserve your quality. Don't deteriorate it just because people are not buying. People will buy, but you need to position it in a right segment, in a right area so there are many demographic geographical locations there are many aspects about how you are positioning your product so if i'm going and positioning it inside a rural market it's not going to work because mm. the people's affordability is not something that is going to afford my market so you have to understand that and that's where my all this research uh, techniques and skills that i developed over the period of time helped me in better positioning the product understanding what the consumers are wanting and then placing it out and not giving it all at once you know because if you it's like you have a plate of food and if you overload it with all the aspects and all the products they're going to get confused and it's a mess so it's better you go gradually don't just rush yourself to, okay from day one it should start generating revenue if it is not think where you went wrong think how you can improve and that's how you know i think we are normally doing when we do any experiments you know so this is what we incorporated as a, as a strategy to come ahead got you it's an iterative process uh, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges that you have faced uh, during this journey of entrepreneurship <sighs> This is a very nice question. And I always say one thing, challenges for me are spices. If I give you a bland food, you will never love it. So yeah. in an entrepreneurship journey, challenges are spices. And those spices, I have relished it. But because every single day, every single morning, you wake up with something that you don't know. Mm. You don't know what the day is going to bring for you in. Whether you will have a happy customer, yes, it's a reward. If you have a, uh, a frustrated or a, some difficult customer, I would say, then mm. it is a challenge for you. But yeah. then that difficult customer teaches you how to make others happy, you know. So those are the challenges you wake up with. And most of the important challenges that I faced was, you know, to sit for that few years without selling the product and sustain myself and also um, you know keep on pursuing that no tomorrow is gonna be better mm. and that was the biggest challenge that i faced when the, the second thing i faced was that you know no matter whatever uh, finance you have in your business it's never mm. enough it's mm. never enough it, it's always going to be a, a fight where you will say thoda hota na, to ye hum kar sakte the. But that thoda is never going to be enough for you. So that was the finance was a challenge as well. 
especially after COVID. And uh, up till now, we were completely self-sufficient, self-funded project. So when you are a self-funded project, you start calculating a single mistake because that burns your pocket. So you are very cautious as to what to input and where to input, you know. Mm. So those challenges of finances were also there. There were challenges from uh, getting myself recognized as a manufacturer because you see manufacturing is such a uh, area where it is more dominated by uh, I wouldn't say male parts only now because the time has changed but initially it was more dominated by male factors so at that time you know you go inside a production area and to give uh, orders to people who are working under you and uh, they have their own way of thinking was a challenge. But then they also understood when we incorporated, when we showed them empathy that we had for them during COVID times, you know. Hmm. So that's when that challenge, which, because in 2019, we got our uh, 20, we got our own production unit so as to keep the products quality optimal, you know, because that was a very core value that we have at NDF. We mm. never compromise on quality. So at that time, they also valued that, you no, know, even in spite she's a woman, but she values our work. And I suppose that is how you make your team happy. The moment you make your team happy, your challenges automatically are reduced and the path becomes more easier to travel, you know, because they give you a push that normally you will either have to pull it from the market and you, you don't get enough of that. So it was a time when you have a, a financial crunches. If your team is there to push you, you mm. definitely can win the race. Yeah. You know, there is a Chinese bamboo that uh, takes five years to grow. Uh, it has to be watered and fertilized uh, in the ground where it has been planted every day. It doesn't break through the ground for five years. But after five years, once it breaks through the ground, it will grow 90 feet tall in just five weeks. So I can relate uh, this, this thing to your first three to five years that you, uh, you know, uh, took to get the patents and uh, get everything right before you uh, commercialize it. But one thing I'm curious to understand during the initial days when you didn't have anything flowing in any revenue or anything, what made you keep going and keep uh, waiting for that moment or being persistent at, at, at your vision and not doing anything else? Uh, what kept you, you know, uh, focused on that? So you rightly mentioned, you know, uh, and that I suppose it comes from your interpersonal skills. When I, I do my self-introspection every single day, what I am good at yesterday and what I can be better today is something that made me keep going. If yesterday I, I couldn't sell one product, okay, when can I uh, sell that? It, it, it's an anxiety that normally gets created. But in that moment, what we did was to keep ourselves calm. We... Uh, incorporated meditation process, which was something like a holistic, it, it sounds holistic, but that is how it had helped me. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I started working on, you know, making innovative recipes because when I used to get frustrated, rather than thinking that, okay, it is not working, you start having one hobby that you are so passionate about. And as I mentioned to you, cooking was my passionate hobby. Mm -hmm. So I used to go inside the kitchen and I said, let me try something. So all my stress when I need it, when I use my uh, imagination, when I use my visualized uh, sensory organs, everything started becoming calming down, you know? So that hobby passion that I had, that again was related with food. So that helped me, you know, to sustain every single day. And in terms of business, what we did was that as a team, like me and my co-founder, uh, we thought that, okay, today we have not earned a single pe penny today, mm -hmm. but is it going to remain the same for whole year? Even if it remains the same for the whole year, how long? One day, and that's how we believe in India, we believe lots in God, you know? So mm -hmm. that is how I always believe. 
uh, one day God is going to look at our hard work and they are going to pay us. And mm -hmm. we don't know when it is going to come. So at that time, if we don't keep working, maybe sometime when God is just going above our head, they will say, oh, these are the lazy people. Why don't we should not pay them? We'll pay others. So why to lose that moment? You know, you keep working for that moment when that God is going to be attracted to you. Because she has worked hard. Let's throw some money. So that were a few uh, inside thought processes that kept me going and, you know, moving ahead in that difficult times. Uh, I just have uh, two more questions. Tell us what is the meaning of entrepreneurship for you? How would you define the term entrepreneur? Entrepreneurship is a, a path which is unlighted. You wake up to a dark path hmm. where you don't know where, what the next step is, but you only know that your dream is end of that darkness. Hmm. And that dream is the light. So that dream keeps me going and going in spite of no matter whatsoever difficulties comes. Mm -hmm. And just you have to work dedicatedly, passionately, without giving up. And it is a turmoil. I'll say it to you very honestly, it's a turmoil. You can't just say that, okay, I'm going to be an entrepreneur today and tomorrow you are successful. No, it's a process where it needs Seed, seed needs to be grown, then watered, and then it starts growing. So you have to have passion, um, passion for it, that you will have to have patience also, and passion also. So both are there. So for me, entrepreneurship is both passion and patience. Okay. Final question. Tell us what are the lessons that you have learned as an entrepreneur, which can be taken away by other entrepreneurs who are listening to us and can be applied to their venture or maybe some mistakes that uh, you did initially that can be avoided by our listeners. Initially, I used to fire a lot. I used to fire my employees a lot. And I, I understood that firing is not something that is entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. It's better you start becoming empathetic you know, with them. And the moment I did that, they, they became very good friends of mine. So tomorrow, if, even if I'm not feeling well, they can see it on my face that today ma'am is not feeling well, let's help her. And the same way we go. So it became more like family. So team is very important. Please do not fire them. If somebody has some challenges that they are not able to perform it, sit with them, discuss with them, think about how it can be improvised rather than just firing them out. So that was the first learnings I did in my initial days as well. Secondly was that about, as I mentioned, patience. You need to have ample and ample amount of patience before your fruit, uh, before your tree gives a fruit. Mm. So be, uh, be patient. Don't give up. You never know which is the end of the road. Maybe when you give up and the moment comes when you could have shined. So why to regret for that? So don't give up. Just keep working, working and keep your goals very high. Like, like right now I am here in UK because I want to develop my business in export also. So that's where I'm learning how I can help people, you know, like even not just in India, but globally who all are suffering. I want to help them. So my aim and my vision is very something which is very... Uh, people centric i would say for their wellness so just aim and goal higher you will succeed all you need to do is just keep working working and working and let the dream be such that it is your passion also as i say cooking was my passion so food industry or making some products became my passion so nobody is there to motivate me because my passion is there to motivate me so be mm -hmm. passionate about what you are doing well, on this note, uh, we will close the session. Thanks for your time, Arpita, and I, I would say it was wonderful uh, to have you on our platform and hear your, uh, uh, grow, your growth and uh, your uh, journey of entrepreneurship. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I, I would like to uh, thank Eli as well. And I look forward that you all grow wherever needed i'm very happy to help you because 
I have been through, so I know what it is. And to all, all the social work that you are doing through your platform, I wish you all the best. And I'm sure a lot many people are going to benefit by connecting with you. So it's my earnest request to all the listeners, do join and subscribe to Ally because they are doing a wonderful and amazing job. Thank you so much. Thank you, Arpita.